Cash happens to be one of the most risky assets in an organization. This is because it is prone to theft and all sorts of misappropriation. Consequently, it is crucial to implement control measures that will ensure that cash is safeguarded. One of the ways to do this is by preparing a bank reconciliation statement. This video will help you to understand, among other things, how to update the cash book and subsequently how to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Hello and welcome to the accounting feed. My name is Philan and I'm your host for this session. Let's dive in. All cash receipts and payments are recorded in the cash book. This is one of the major books of prime entry and is prepared and maintained by the organization internally. The totals in this book will be posted in the general or nominal ledger called cash or bank account periodically. An extra control is needed to verify this balance. This is where the bank statement comes in. Since this statement records all banking transactions of the business, it should be possible to agree the figure in this statement with the balance in the general ledger. However, this is not always straightforward since there are several instances where the two documents may have different figures. Thus, a reconciliation between the two is necessary. Reasons for preparing a bank reconciliation statement A bank reconciliation statement may be prepared for the following reasons. First, detection of errors. A bank reconciliation statement helps to identify errors after which they can be corrected. Secondly, tracking interests and charges. A bank reconciliation statement can help identify some of the transactions that may not be in the general ledger such as interest credited into the account and bank charges deducted without prior notice. Thirdly, detection of fraud. The bank reconciliation statement enables the managers to track the history of cash transactions and as such, any potential fraud can be detected easily. Reasons for the differences between cash book and bank statement figures. As already mentioned, the balance in the general ledger should be the same as the balance in the bank statement. However, these two balances do not usually agree for the following reasons. Number 1. Unpresented checks. This occurs due to time lag between writing a check and the payment appearing in the bank statement. For instance, if an entity issues a check to a supplier but the supplier does not cash the check by the time of preparation of bank reconciliation statement, this amount will still be in the entity's bank account despite being deducted from the cash book and general ledger. Number two, unrecorded lodgements or uncredited checks. Unlike unpresented checks, these are receipts. In the same vein though, these occur as a result of time lag between receiving a check and depositing or clearing the check by the bank. For instance, if we receive a check from a customer but we do not cash the check by the time of preparing the bank reconciliation statement, the amount will only appear in our cash book but will not be in the bank statement. Take note of this. In these two instances, it is important for you to understand that check payments and receipts are recorded in the cash book immediately they are issued or received. So. These will be reflected in the cash book and hence general ledger but will not appear in the bank statement until they are deposited into the bank and cleared. Number 3. Direct debits not yet recorded in the cash book or general ledger. Number 4. Standing orders not yet recorded in the cash book or general ledger. Number 5. Bank charges not recorded in the cash book or general ledger. Number 6. Errors such as transposition errors or casting errors in the cash book or general ledger. Number seven, errors made by the bank in the bank statement. Steps in preparing bank reconciliation statement. I do recommend that you follow a two-step process which involves first, updating the cash book or general ledger. Second, preparing the bank reconciliation proper. Let's start with the first one, updating the cash book. Before preparing the bank reconciliation statement, the cash book or general ledger should be updated or corrected. This correction takes into account those items that appear in the bank statement but are not in the cash book as well as any errors in the cash book. These items include 1. Direct debits 2. Direct credits 
3. Standing orders. 4. Bank charges. 5. Errors such as transposition errors or casting errors. 6. Dishonor checks if they have not been adjusted for already. Notice that the items that I've identified here are all affecting the cash book or general ledger because they may appear in the bank statement, yes, but they do not appear in the cash book. If you put this in a format, it will look like this. Start with the balances by the cash book or general ledger. This is before updating it. Adjust these for direct credits. This is to be added. Less direct debits. Less standing orders. Less bank charges. Less dishonor checks. Add or less errors in the cash book. Now why I have add or less there is because it depends on the effect that the error has in the cash book. If the error has led to an overstatement of the balance in the cash book, then that has to be deducted. But if it has led to an understatement, then it has to be added back. This will give us the balances by the updated cash book. Please note that direct debits, also known as direct withdrawals, are financial transactions where one party withdraws cash from another person's bank account. In this case, the request for payment is made by the payee directly to the bank and is typically meant for recurring payments. Such transactions include credit card payments and utility bills, where the payment amounts fluctuate from time to time. Direct credit. This is an electronic transfer of funds initiated by the payer, which sends funds directly into the entity's bank account. So, of course, this is a receipt. Standing order. This is an instruction to a bank by the payee to make a regular fixed payment to a particular party. The next step now after updating the cash book is to prepare a bank reconciliation statement. For this, we start with the balance as per the bank statement right there. Adjusted for add uncredited checks because this is a receipt. Less unpresented checks because this is a payment. And then finally, add or less errors in the bank statement. Again, why I say add or less is because it depends on the effect that the error has on the balance in the bank statement. If the error has led to an overstatement of the balance, then we need to deduct it. But if it has led to an understatement of the balance, we need to add it back. So this gives us the balance as per the updated cash book. We've reconciled them now. A critical point to note at this very point is that the figure that appears in the statement of financial position as bank balance is the balance as per the updated cash book. Do not use the balance as per the bank statement as this is not part of the double entry. It is not a general ledger. This marks the end of our session today. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in accounting and finance topics, make sure you subscribe to this channel, The Accounting Feed. And if you have any questions on this topic or on an area that you'd like us to do a video on, please post it in the comment section below. Feel free to share this video and channel with anyone you know might be interested in this type of content. Hey, don't be stingy. Until the next one, cheers!